Good morning, everyone. Today on Good Morning Maine, state fire marshals are looking for the cause of an apartment fire that caused the death of a man in Old Town. We'll have the latest. Also, uh, a shock for people at the Bangor restaurant yesterday as a vehicle suddenly crashes into the side of the building. And students at a local high school launch their own thrift store to make sure all students have the clothing they need. Good morning, everyone. I'm Craig Colson. Emma Smith has the day off today. We thank you for joining us. Happy Monday to you. It looks like a very messy Monday ahead. A powerful storm system is moving through the state at this hour, expecting to pick up as the day rolls along. It's going to bring some very heavy winds and along with some heavy rain, uh, causing concerns about flooding, especially along the coast. So it could be a very long day. Good news is, is there are extra utility crews standing by in case the power does go out. Um, and we'll have a little bit more on that coming up in just a few moments. But first, a check of that forecast with Devin Biggs. Alrighty, thank you very much. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's Zordis trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Alrighty, lots of advisories out there this morning. We have flood alerts that are currently posted. We have wind alerts also posted as well. Let's pull some of these alerts off the map here and kind of talk about some of these here. We do have a coastal flood warning that's posted until 5 p.m. this evening because of a south to north wind pushing some of the ocean water on land. There's a flood watch over most of Maine as well because of the heavy rainfall that will be expected and a storm warning up until 1 a.m. Tuesday along the coast because of active surf that will be moving in. Now let's talk about the wind alerts here. Wind advisory is up until 1 a.m. Tuesday. Same with this high wind warning here. Wind gusts up to around 60 miles per hour. Yes, 60 miles per hour will be possible as we move forward. Lots of alerts in effect right now and the weather is just getting started here with the rain that's continuing to track in from the south to the north and we're just getting started here the heart of the system is not here just yet there it is right there tracking from the south going to the north so rain and wind will be expected today wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour possible along with some decent heavy rainfall as well future cast moving forward showing that rain continuing to move in we'll start to catch a break by later on this evening by around eight to nine o'clock or so and they're looking pretty good as we head towards early tuesday morning so your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period a lot of rain on the way gusty winds and temperatures in the 50s you full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Devin. One of the big concerns will be around uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon when high tide is there. That's when uh, there could be the potential for more flooding along the coast. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on that as the day rolls along. Meanwhile, with more on the storm as it approaches, Asia Reed is learning how the state is preparing and why previous storms may have set this one up to cause some more damage. Sunday night into Monday, Mainers are bracing for strong winds and heavy rain with the potential threat of flooding and power outages. Central Maine Power spokesperson John Breed says this is the fourth storm to hit in just four weeks. Wind is one of this storm's greatest threats. We could see gusts up to 60 miles per hour along the coast, but we have our crews pre-staged and we'll be ready to respond if storm damage does occur. Breed says they have a few hundred line and tree crews ready to take action, though heavy winds do create some safety challenges. We cannot put crews up uh, in wind speeds that are greater than 30 to 35 miles per hour, depending on the work they're doing. If crews have to wait out the high winds, Breed says they'll help clear blocked roads from trees and down lines. If there is a down power line, uh, do not go near it. Um, notify us uh, so we can make it safe. Uh, no line is ever safe to touch. Right now, the soil is wet and soggy from our last few storms, potentially causing trees to have weaker root systems. Could create some problems for the trees. Which could cause trees to come down. With high winds, you might want to consider taking in any outdoor holiday decorations so they don't break or blow away. That was Asia Reed reporting, and as we said, the uh, big concern will be around 3 o'clock this afternoon when high tide comes in. We'll also, coming up a little bit later in the broadcast, hear how this storm is affecting other states south from us. There's words of um, some flight delays, that sort of thing, so stick around. We'll have more on that coming up. Meanwhile, in other news this morning, one man is dead following a fire at an Old Town apartment building early Sunday morning. It was a desperate situation as firefighters worked to get everyone out, but one of the residents later died at a hospital. Our Grace Blanchard was on the scene and has more. An Old Town resident has died after succumbing to injuries from a structure fire that broke out at an apartment building early Sunday morning. We had one occupant that we were able to get out immediately um, and we were looking for a second. Uh, crews were able to take the second occupant out and he was, transferred, he was trans, uh, transported to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. 
Officials have identified the deceased as 71-year-old Banton Foster. According to the Old Town Fire Department, crews responded to the scene around 5 a.m. Upon arrival, they discovered heavy fire from the backside of the building, resulting in significant damage to the second floor. We had the fire under control relatively quickly. Um, complete extinguishment took about an hour, uh, but we were able to, to knock it down and make access uh, to, the, to, to get the second individual out relatively quickly. Officials say the downstairs apartments were not occupied. However, crews helped a female occupant from one of the upstairs apartments as she proceeded to escape from a second story window by using an extension cord. She was assisted by Old Town Police when they arrived um, and they were able to help her get down the, the extension cord out of the, the window. Stillwater Avenue was closed from College Avenue to Bennick Road for several hours as crews worked to put out the fire. The cause of the fire is under investigation by the State Fire Marshal's Office. In Old Town, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Now, police say three synagogues across Maine were targeted by bomb threats. Authorities confirm all three were hoaxes and there is no threat to the public. Police in South Portland say staff at Congregation Beth Ham on Westbrook Street opened a, an email around 8.30 yesterday morning and that said multiple bombs were on site and would be going off within a couple hours. Children who had arrived for Sunday school were evacuated and parents were called. And by the time South Portland police went through the building, they learned that the same threat was sent to Temple Beth Israel in Bath as well as to Temple Beth El in Augusta. Police officials say the email came from a server that hides the sender's name, but will continue to investigate to try to identify the sender of those bomb threats. A Norwich Walk man is facing numerous charges after he allegedly stole a car and led police on a dangerous chase. The Department of Public Safety says 57-year-old Lawrence Knowles was identified as the person who stole a Chevy Impala Sunday afternoon from the Cumberland Farm Store on College Avenue. He was later spotted passed out behind the wheel along the side of Interstate 95 in Sydney. But when police approached him, they say he sped off. The chase continued south until troopers attempted a pit maneuver to stop him, but they say Knowles got away and then started driving north in the southbound lanes. He ended up exiting the interstate in Fairfield and was eventually found on the Howe Road and was arrested. Knowles is now facing a number of charges, including leaving the scene of an accident. Officials say he had sideswiped another vehicle during that chase and caused the driver to crash into the median barrier, causing minor injuries. Well, the murder trial of two suspects accused in the killing of a Perry woman will continue this morning in Washington County Superior Court. Donnell Dana and Kaylee Brackett have been accused of murdering Kimberly Neptune back in April of 2022. With the state's case now rested, the defense began questioning witnesses on Friday. One of the witnesses to take the stand was the mother of Donnell Dana. She answered questions about Dana's activities in the days leading up to Kimberly Neptune's murder, including Dana having spent time at her house during that time. According to a police affidavit, Dana and Brackett had planned to steal drugs and money from Neptune before she was stabbed more than 400 times. Testimony will resume this morning. Well, breakfast was cut short for some people on Sunday morning after a vehicle struck a restaurant in Bangor. Bangor Police and Fire and Rescue responded to the Denny's parking lot around 1030 Sunday after receiving reports that a vehicle hit the front of the building. Police say an individual was attempting to park and accidentally stepped on the gas instead of the brake. The driver then reportedly backed up, turned and then stepped on the gas again and proceeded to strike four vehicles in the parking lot. Police say no injuries were reported, and according to a witness whose vehicle was among those hit, restaurant goers began scrambling after hearing what many described as a loud bang. I was getting my slumber jack. I was ready to eat, and next thing you know, there you go, a big boom. I mean, a boom that it was unexpected. I thought it was uh, maybe an engine blow up or something. They say several of the vehicles had to be towed away from the scene. The restaurant did remain open for the rest of the day and only suffered minor damage. The damage to the, to the vehicles is estimated to be in the several thousand dollar range. Well, three men appeared in district court after being arrested following a search warrant executed by the Machias Police Department. That search led to the discovery of over, over 2,600 pot plants and over 100 pounds of processed and packaged cannabis. Our Doug Banks has more. Just outside downtown Machias, 930.
Thursday at 414 East Kennebec Road. Machai's Police Department, led by Officer Timothy Mace, arrested and charged three men in connection to an illegal commercial cannabis grow operation. Assisting the search warrant was the DEA, FBI, Washington County Sheriff's Department, among many other agencies. On Friday, the Machai's Police Department began processing the 2,607 plants found. According to the Machai's Police Department, it was a complaint from an anonymous community member about an illegal grow that helped bring the investigation to where it is today. Machai's residents Ming Li, Peng Yu Feng, and Brooklyn, New York resident Dong Yang Li appeared before district court in Calais. Each man has been charged with two Class B felonies, illegal trafficking in Scheduled Z drugs, and illegal trafficking in cannabis over 500 plants. Dong Yang Li's bail is set for $1,000. This particular defendant has a prior federal conviction for drug distribution. While Fang and Ming Li's bail is set for $500. Their next appearance in court will be a dispositional conference scheduled for April 15th in Machias at 8.30. In Machias, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, it looks like Mainers will get a bit of a break after all. Earlier last week, we told you the IRS was planning to tax the winter energy relief payments, and that had caused the main commissioner of the Department of Administrative and Financial Services to send a letter to the IRS asking them not to do so. And then on Friday afternoon, the IRS sent out a statement saying, quote, the IRS understands the concerns of Maine residents and assures taxpayers that their state payments to lower the cost of winter energy bills are not taxable under federal law. The IRS says it has communicated this to state officials to eliminate any confusion. Certainly some good news. Those won't be taxed after all. The Hannaford in Rockland is recalling Hannaford brand cube beef steak that was purchased at the store on Thursday, December 14th, with a sell-by date of December 18th. Customers are being asked to check their storage and freezer areas for the product, and if it's found, don't eat it because it may contain foreign material. On your screen now are further details about the recalled product. According to Hannaford representatives, this recall advisory only applies to the Rockland store and no injuries or illnesses have been reported. The product or its packaging may be returned to the Rockland store for a full refund. No word on what that foreign body might be, the foreign material. All right, the time now is 612. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, Old Town students launched their own thrift store. And we'll also visit a very busy food pantry in Burlington where workers are experiencing the increased need for help as we head through the holidays. But first, another check of that forecast. A very messy day ahead today. We can expect heavy wind and heavy rain today. Potential for flooding is very real. The highs around 58 degrees. Tonight, rain and wind will be calming down with lows dropping down to around 41. Tomorrow, partly cloudy with just a chance of showers with highs near 47. Oh, it's looking a lot like Christmas around here. Well, we are both looking a lot like Christmas. Yeah, I got all this at Rennie's, by the way. That's awesome. We got everything. We have everything for Christmas. We have lots of lights, we have bows, we have Christmas cards, we got bags, we got bells. For 72 years, Rennie's has been your main staple, and we love supporting Maine made and local products. So thank you for shopping Rennie's, and thank you for shopping local this Christmas season. Thank you for shopping Rennie's. The sweet spot where every craving finds its perfect match. Indulge in our pastries, delicious sandwiches, and our freeze-dried candy. Quench your thirst with our trendy bubble tea, natural energy drinks, or our all-fruit smoothies. The sweet spot in Ellsworth where sweet meets savory and every sip is an adventure. Hi, this is Jim with Lowry & Associates. Some guy slid across the center line and hit my daughter. Is there any way you can come meet us at the hospital? I can meet you at the hospital right now. Lowry & Associates settled my daughter's case for $250,000. Tune in for my new game show, Person, Place, or Thing. Hopscotch. Someone came to play. Weekdays at 10 on ABC7. <laughs> Local news weeknights at 6 with Beth Jones and Peter Dubois on ABC7. If you stop by Walmart and Brewer on Saturday, you might have seen a police cruiser parked out front. And if you look closer, you may have seen that it was filled with toys. Our Doug Banks tells us why. 
is a tradition the Brewer Police Department is proud to uphold. <laughs> Every year around this time, officers park a cruiser and open their doors. Oh. Hold on. Kayla's packing job here. I didn't uh, realize we were going to get this little much. Bit. Accepting donations from some caring Walmart patrons. People have been very generous today. We've had a couple of people come by and, you know, donate an entire cart full of toys. From a fire station playhouse to stuffed animals, popular holiday toys, and a life-size version of a fan favorite Star Wars character. This year, they partnered with a new organization to help officers drive away with a cruiser full of toys. This is the first time we've done it with this organization. We've done it with different ones in the past. Of course, COVID put a damper on some of that, but uh, this particular organization is the Marine Corps um, Toys for Tots program. From a drop box inside to a cruiser stacked to the brim, Brewer PD is doing their part to make sure local kids have smiles on their faces this Christmas. This is just another way to, uh, to show how much our community cares about others here. Uh, people here tend to be very generous. Sometimes folks are struggling this time of year, and this allows a, you know, a kid to have a toy under the tree. In Brewer, Doug Banks, ABC7, and Fox 22 News. Very nicely done. Well, meanwhile, the Cross Point Church off Broadway in Bangor was home to a Christmas donation drive on Saturday. Community members were welcome to bring items such as toys, winter clothing, and household supplies. The event was hosted by the nonprofit Shepherd's Godparent Home, and State Representative, Representative Austin Terrio, who brought his pull truck for people to see, was also there. I think it's really important for an organization like ours because we don't take any state or federal funding. So in or, uh, this type of an event helps us greatly and it helps us not only help the women that are currently we're serving, but the women who have graduated and moved on from our program, who are out in the community, that are trying to support themselves and their children who've successfully gotten into the community who are working and um, you know raising their children on their own and this is a great way for us to help them provide for their children too for Christmas. The Shepherd's Godparent Home provides services for pregnant or parenting women such as medical care, case management, counseling and more. To learn more about the group you can visit the story on our website at foxbangor.com. A group of Old Town students now offers a free thrift store for both students and staff members, and it focuses on an important matter. Our Matthew Dronsik with that story. If you make your way to the second floor of Old Town High School, you may stumble across a thrift store set up by Jobs for Maine graduate students. Ooh, pink is my favorite color! Its goal, to make sure all staff and students can have the clothing they need. Here we have available a bunch of different things. Um, Shirts, pants, shoes, socks. We have it here available for students to have access to um, in a non-judgment way. While this clothing is free to members of the school, it's also a way to end the stigma of asking for help. I think it's really important that students have a place to come to get necessities like clothing. It can be very embarrassing to ask for help. As scary as this could be, JMG students admit they've used this for themselves. I actually, uh... A few weeks ago, I got a, got a shirt from Hill. More importantly, Hilder says she hopes this thrift shop inspires her students. There are so many careers that exist out there that um, are revolved around helping the general public. And so this can this is a way for my students to kind of dip their feet into those types of projects. The thrift shop is open to the Old Town High School community every Thursday and Friday for the whole day. In Old Town, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Very nice. Well, the time now is 619. Coming up after the break, the powerful storm passing through Maine today is causing big problems elsewhere. We'll hear how it's impacting other areas. Plus, border officials are announcing new changes with hopes it will cut down on illegal crossings along the southern border. We'll have the details on those stories and more as Good Morning Maine continues. It's time to start planning that new home or garage you've been thinking about. Hammond Lumber Company is here to help, offering complete building packages with everything you need. With several options on their website and thousands of unique plans in their in-house drawing catalog. Hammond will help you make your dreams a reality. Choose your materials from Hammond's extensive showroom displays. And Hammond will deliver your order from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Start planning your new home or garage at Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Oh, oh no! Son of a nutcracker! This is what I get for eating all those cookies. 
Hey, Rotor Rooter, I got a big clog for you. I'm, uh, I'm stuck in the chimney. Again? Yep, I'm the clog. Any chance you could fa la la over here? For all your holiday plumbing needs, Rotor Rooter can save the day. And away go troubles down the drain. Rotor Rooter. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining, and start saving now. Escape to tranquility at the Mill Cafe in Dover Foxcroft, where every sip comes with a view. Enjoy fresh brews and delectable bites right on the water's edge. Your oasis awaits. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. The weather and travel delays this morning at the beginning of the busy week before Christmas. Some of the busiest airports in the country are now on alert as a storm system moves into the northeast following a weekend of heavy flooding for millions of Americans. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, a damaging storm barreling up the east coast is expanding, kicking off this week before Christmas with treacherous travel for millions of Americans. A widespread two to four inches of rain are expected from Delaware to the Canadian border. More than six inches could fall in parts of New England, with wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour possible along the coast. Fear, worry, anxiousness, just figuring out how we got to set up for the next storm and what time the high tides are coming. The storm already drenched Florida with tropical storm-like conditions. Parts of South Carolina got nearly a foot of rain, swamping Charleston. Hundreds of flights have been delayed at airports in Atlanta, Miami, and Fort Lauderdale. Beginning this week, until January 2nd, 39 million Americans are expected to fly, with peak travel expected this Thursday and Friday. This storm already putting a damper on holiday travel plans. I'm excited, and yeah, I'm, but we're going to have to wait in long lines, but it's fine. Much colder temperatures will return to the east after this storm. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And if you have any of those big Christmas inflatable things outside your home, now might be a good time to go out and put a big rope on it or something. Otherwise, it might blow away somewhere. Uh, the storm still moving this way and expected to be um, picking up as the day moves along. Let's check back in with Devin Biggs to see exactly what we can expect. Alrighty, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Alrighty, this morning, lots of alerts in effect, though. This is pretty much everything in effect right now, from the wind alerts to the flood alerts, and even some issues over the ocean as well. Let's talk about the flood alerts here, though. We have coastal flood warnings that are posted until 5 p.m. along the coastline, though. Gusty winds out of the south going toward the north will make it interesting as we do move forward. There's also a flood watch over land because of heavy rainfall expected and storm warnings. The highest level though for the oceans because we will have gusty winds stirring up the ocean as well. So a lot of issues taking place and of course wind advisories and of course some high wind warnings also posted as well. This will last until about 1 a.m. later on Tuesday too. So lots of alerts in effect moving forward. So wave heights are not bad just yet at around at seven to nine feet. So this is enough to prompt some kind of advisory. We notice the colors further down to the south, and that right there is going to be heading in our direction moving forward later on today, so be ready for that. Meanwhile, though, as we do to see things develop, we do have rain tracking from the south going toward the north. Not a lot of it just yet, though, but we are just getting started as more rain and gusty winds will be taking place. We'll pull this radar further down to the south here. You can see there's a lot of rainfall near the Boston area, and this is all going to be tracking off towards the north as we do move forward. In time, the bigger picture looks like this. This is that system right here tracking from the south going toward the north and this will give us a lot of fanfare today but later on tonight and parts of tomorrow things will start to calm down so future cast moving forward plenty of heavy rainfall plenty of gusty winds these black lines here indicating isobars lines of equal pressure and the way they're stacked up like this indicating some gusty winds we'll be dealing with that today and the rainfall continues throughout the daytime period until about eight to nine o'clock later on tonight the rain will begin to end and the winds will slowly begin to back off as we head towards your tuesday once we head towards tuesday though some clouds moving through maybe some sunshine 
too. And perhaps a few rain showers possible in a few spots, so it won't be widespread. Some of you may miss out on that. But anything that does develop is out of here pretty quickly by Tuesday evening. And Tuesday night into Wednesday, we're looking pretty good as the system finally begins to clear out of here. As for the rainfall, additional rainfall moving forward, another one to two, maybe up to three inches of rainfall before we're all finished up. So we'll be ready for flooding potential with all this rainfall on the way. And the gusts of wind screaming up to 50 to even 60 miles per hour at times. Say this will be a pretty strong system moving through. Then by later on tonight in the parts of your Tuesday, that's when things will finally begin to calm down. So as for today, here we go. Upper 50s, rain and wind. The heavy rain at times will be expected. And southeast wind, not a typo, getting up to 60 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, lower 40s, rain and wind. Now, of course, this will be calming down late. But south wind getting up to around 40 miles per hour at times. Tomorrow, a little bit better. Upper 40s, party cloudy, a few rain showers. And south wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation Extended Forecast, party cloudy Wednesday and Thursday with highs in the middle to upper 30s. Then we'll be in the lower 30s Friday with a mostly sunny sky. Who likes to drink good coffee? At Carabasa Coffee Company, we roast premium quality coffee beans from all over the world. Roasted to perfection in small batches, our coffee is always fresh. We offer large selection, including our specialty blends, organic, single origins, decaf, and flavor. Whether you like light, medium, or dark roast, we have coffee to suit every taste. We offer flat rate shipping for online orders, and we ship fast. Carabasa Coffee Company. Drink good coffee. R&K Variety is more than just a convenience store. With delicious homemade food made fresh daily, we offer hearty meals that don't break the bank. Whether it be our delicious chicken pot pie, one of our many savory soups, or a pizza, you can't go wrong at R&K Variety. Looking for a drink after a long work day? R&K Variety is an agency liquor store with an impressive selection. R&K Variety, more than just a convenience store. We're your neighbor, chef, barista, and friend. Stop by today. Happy Holidays from Coastal Auto Parts, your family-owned and operated auto parts store, featuring a great line of Milwaukee tools for Christmas. Make Complete Tire Service Incorporated your next stop for new tires, quality maintenance, and professional automotive service located in Ellsworth. At Disconnected Tattoo and Art Company, gift certificates are available. Body art is the perfect gift that keeps on giving. Welcome to the Orno Arcade, your local affordable destination. We want to provide you with the best experience we can without costing a small fortune. Our ever popular nine hole black light mini golf course is a huge attraction. Plus we have the best arcade video games to choose from, including both modern and retro games. We have weeknight specials consisting of. We look forward to seeing you soon at the Orno Arcade. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. We're learning new details this morning about an incident involving the president's motorcade. President Biden had just finished answering reporters' questions about a staff after a staff dinner in Delaware when the motorcade was struck by a vehicle. Officers quickly surrounded the car with guns ready. Fortunately, no one was injured and the president and his wife departed the scene without incident. Local police are now investigating and are working to determine if the driver was impaired at the time of that crash. Well, now to the war in the Middle East and the discovery of a massive tunnel not far from Israel's border with Gaza. It's raising even more concerns and questions about intelligence failures before the October attack by Hamas. Here's ABC's Allison Kosek with more. This morning, Israel's military is revealing what it describes as Hamas's largest tunnel under Gaza, nearly two and a half miles long, large enough to drive a car through. Inside, IDF soldiers say they found weapons, even a rail system. ABC's Inez de la Quatara was there. You can see how deep this tunnel goes. This is something that would have taken years to build. The IDF saying this probably took millions of dollars. <laughs> Families of some of the Israeli hostages still held by Hamas are now camping outside Israeli military headquarters, demanding a new deal to release their loved ones. Their protests coming after Israeli forces accidentally killed three hostages Friday. 
A preliminary investigation found the three hostages left a building in an area of very intense fighting, carrying a stick with a white cloth. A soldier reportedly saw them as a threat and opened fire. Troops were ordered to stop firing, but another soldier shot and killed the third hostage. Investigators say the men had written these signs outside the building pleading for help, saying SOS and help three hostages written on fabric using leftover food. It's unclear if the soldiers saw those signs. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin arrives in Israel today as the Biden administration pushes Israel to discuss a more targeted phase of the war that could better protect civilians in Gaza. Meanwhile, back in the U.S., amid a surge of anti-Semitism, synagogues and Jewish facilities in at least 19 states and Washington, D.C., received bomb threats yesterday. And hundreds of so-called swatting incidents have been reported in recent days. That's when someone reports a non-existing serious crime. Swatting is not a prank or a joke. It's intended to disrupt, harass, cause fear. In Washington, D.C., a man was also arrested for spraying an unknown substance at people outside a synagogue. He's being charged with assault. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Meanwhile, U.S. border officials are announcing more changes today to address the migrant crisis on the southern border. The new action comes as President Trump faces scrutiny for his immigration rhetoric, which critics are comparing to rhetoric used by Nazis during World War II. ABC's Liz Landers with that story. This morning, officials at the U.S.-Mexico border are temporarily suspending freight train crossings in El Paso and Eagle Pass, Texas, in order to redeploy resources elsewhere. It comes after authorities reportedly apprehended more than 4,000 migrants in the area yesterday alone. Temporary closures were also recently imposed at a port of entry in Arizona and at a pedestrian entrance in San Diego. Over the weekend, Senate negotiators failed to reach a deal on a framework for border security improvements, which Republicans are demanding as a condition to pass more funding for the wars in Israel and Ukraine. Republicans point to national security concerns at the southern border and the smuggling of drugs. A truck driver at a cargo facility in California just across the Mexican border was recently arrested, accused of carrying 3,000 pounds of meth and more than 500 pounds of cocaine inside packages of jalapeno paste. But Democrats say if the problem of illegal immigration was solved today, the illegal drug supply in the U.S. would be unaffected because they say the drugs mostly come through legal ports of entry. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. Former President Trump is facing criticism for his immigration rhetoric, speaking about, quote, blood purity, echoing Nazi slogans of World War II. Trump doubled down at a campaign event last night, saying the U.S. needs a cleanup. We will begin, and we have no choice, the largest deportation operation in American history. One of Trump's rivals in the Republican race, Chris Christie, blasted the former president. He's disgusting. And what he's doing is dog whistling to Americans who feel absolutely under stress and strain from the economy and from the conflicts around the world. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. Well, meanwhile, as for those bipartisan talks in Washington on new border security measures, lawmakers did report progress yesterday while also downplaying any hope for a deal before the holidays. We will keep you up to date. Well, coming up on the second half of the newscast, the rise in COVID cases, just one of the health concerns as people get together for the holidays. We'll have some advice that will help keep your family safe as Good Morning Maine continues. Pat's Pizza in Holden has recently expanded their seating capacity. Call now for reserving your event or holiday party with us. The new indoor golf simulators are open for the season. Call now for reservations. My father worked at the mill for over 30 years. He was exposed to a great community and excelled at his job, but he was also exposed to asbestos. The air quality inside the mill was always his biggest complaint. He had no idea how deadly some of the products and materials were. When he was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew to call Joe Bornstein's office to get my dad the help he needs and the justice he deserves. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win.
come stop by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. Quitting smoking, vaping, and other tobacco may be tough, but you can do it. Even if you don't get it right the first time, don't give up. Working with a quit coach increases your chances of successfully quitting, especially combined with quit medications. That's why each quit program through the main quit link offers free patches, gum, and or lozenges and helps you build a customized quit plan. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW or enroll online at mainquitlink.com. It's free and it works. GMA 7A this week. We're counting down to Christmas with Patrick Dempsey, Emma Stone, Hannah Waddingham, Brandy, and the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. All live. Plus, here come our ugly sweaters on... Good morning, America. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Monday, December 18th, 2023. Christmas is now just a week away. It's going by very quickly. Next week at this time, people will start waking up with their families to open up presents. And just a week to go, if you can wait a little longer. All right, let's get right to some history on this day in history. Back in 1892, the Nutcracker Ballet premiered in St. Petersburg, Russia. Although it is now considered a classic, it received generally negative reception from the critics. In 1917, Congress passed the 18th Amendment, prohibiting the manufacture, sale, or transportation of intoxicating liquors. It was enacted to protect families from the, quote, scourge of drunkenness. But prohibition would eventually come to an end in 1933. In 1936, the first giant panda arrived in the U.S. from China. It was sold to the Brookfield Zoo in San Francisco for $8,750. In 1963, the film Pink Panther premiered. Remember that one? Pretty neat. In 1979, the sound barrier was broken on land for the first time by Stanley Barrett when he drove more than 739 miles per hour. In 2009, James Cameron's Avatar was released to the public and would become the highest grossing film of all time. Also in 2009, General Motors announced it would stop producing Saab motor vehicles and finally, in 2019, the U.S. House impeached President Donald Trump on two charges. It was the first of two Trump impeachment trials that would end in acquittal by the Senate. Today's birthdays include singer Billie Eilish, who is 22 years old today, actor Brad Pitt turned 60, and Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones is 80 years old today. Can you imagine that? Say what you will about Keith Richards, but he's 80 years old and still rocking strong, getting ready to go out on another tour. Pretty neat. I hope I can do that when I'm 80 years old. Well, I can't go on tour now, but you know what I mean. Do things like him. All right, let's get right to that forecast. As we've been saying, it's going to be a very stormy day today. The winds picking up later on could cause some big power outages and a lot of rain up to six inches in some some local areas. We aren't all going to get six inches, but we are going to get a lot of rain, which could cause some flooding. Here's Devin with the details. Alrighty, thank you very much. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Alrighty, lots of advisories out there this morning. We have flood alerts that are currently posted. We have wind alerts also posted as well. Let's pull some of these alerts off the map here and kind of talk about some of these here. We do have a coastal flood warning that's posted until 5 p.m. this evening because of a south to north wind pushing some of the ocean water on land. There's a flood watch over most of Maine as well because of the heavy rainfall that will be expected and a storm warning up until 1 a.m. Tuesday along the coast because of active surf that will be moving in. Now let's talk about the wind alerts here. Wind advisory is up until 1 a.m. Tuesday. Same with this high wind warning here. Wind gusts up to around 60 miles per hour. Yes, 60 miles per hour will be possible as we move forward. Lots of alerts in effect right now and the weather's just getting started here with the rain that's continuing to track in from the south to the north and we're just getting started here the heart of the system is not here just yet there it is right there tracking from the south going to the north so rain and wind will be expected today wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour possible along with some decent heavy rainfall as well future cast moving forward showing that rain continuing to move in we'll start to catch a break by later on this evening by around eight to nine o'clock or so and then we're looking pretty good as we head towards early tuesday morning so your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period a lot of rain on the way gusty winds and temperatures in the 50s your full five-day forecast is coming up. Thank you very much, Devin. When we come back, today's sports news and more. Don't go away.
Did you know that it's possible to buy the wrong type of flooring for your home? Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional contractor, the experts at Don DeCal Mainwood Floors are here to help, offering solid pro advice from choosing the right material and color to installation. Don DeCal features the highest quality hardwood flooring sourced from lumber right here in Maine, from Maine traditions. Not only will you get a floor you'll love, you'll get a floor that will last. Don DeCal Mainwood Floors, buy from the best, forget the rest. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovations supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home, or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. The Farmer's Table in Corinna brings you outstanding breakfasts, lunches, and dinners made from farm-grown fresh ingredients. Dinner specials are available every day. Enjoy our homemade desserts, and above all, bring your appetite to the Farmer's Table in Corinna. I got hurt by a big truck. Why did I call the twos? Because life-changing injuries deserve life-changing money. We got a client who broke multiple bones in a commercial vehicle accident, $700,000. Call the twos. We win for you. Plan and build your ideal new home or garage with a customized building package from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudall here. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's start with Old Town High School, the school announcing their six inductees for their 2024 Hall of Fame class this past week, including one of the best local football stars of the era, Andre Miller is getting a nod. The 2016 graduate was a star helping guide the Coyotes to a regional title berth his senior year with 1,000 receiving yards. He then went on to be a wide receiver at Husson and UMaine and was most recently on the New York Giants and Green Bay Packers practice squads. Miller says he's grateful for the honor and the support of the Old Town community. It's an honor, I mean, to come from being a freshman when I first walked into Old Town and trying to make my mark any way I could. Um, I mean, it's truly, truly remarkable to kind of see what's happened and how things have turned out. Just the supporting cast I have and then obviously everyone else in the community. Um, it's just, it's unbelievable. I mean, I'm truly thankful for it all. Miller is a free agent right now after getting cut by the Packers this summer, but he is nowhere near done giving up his dream to suit up for an NFL game. His journey has already re required him taking some extra steps, so it'll be no problem for Miller to take yet another challenge head on. I've had to take a detour, kind of, <laughs> a few different times in my life, so I feel like I'm going to have to do that again. I might have to do the, uh, the XFL route, but... I mean, I'm up for it. I'm, uh, I'm used to it at this point, and knowing that my journey has been kind of an unorthodox way. Um, but, no, I'm excited. I mean, I'm just excited to get back to football and doing what I truly love. Can't wait to see what he can do. The Hall of Fame induction ceremony will be at Old Town High on January 20th. Speaking of Old Town, a huge boys hoops matchup in B North Saturday afternoon with the Coyotes hosting the Vikings from Caribou. Battle of unbeatens here. Both squads looking to start 3-0. and oh. Second quarter, Caribou leads. Kobe will let to Landon Belanger at the top of the key. He banks it in, plus the foul, a four-point play later. Caribou pass tipped by Old Town's Aiden Gom, picked up by Grayson Tebow, and he finds Gom with a great bounce pass to the rim for two. Rams still lead at the half. Third quarter, here's Belanger, a great pass of his own, a rocket down to Cayman Sargent, who lays it in. Finally, it's Tebow, fresh off a rebound, taking it all the way down by himself and pulling up for a sweet mid-range J. This one goes back and forth and a double overtime with Old Town winning 66-58. Now let's head down to Newport where Nokomis Girls Hoops takes on defending Class A champs Lawrence. Second quarter, Warriors Ember Emberly Michaud on the inbound to Danica Migliore. She kicks it to Bree Bolu who drains the jumper. Later, Lawrence's Ashley Shores to Madeline Provost on the wing for three. Bingo for the star sophomore. Bulldogs up double digits at the half. Third quarter now. Delaney Randlett over to Migliore. Pulls up from the opposite wing and similar results for her from deep. 
but Lawrence was too much on the day. In transition, Ella Minahan down to Provost finds Kaylee Elkins at the rim for two. Bulldogs win the game 59 to 24. And now for some other hoop scores from the area. Class B boys basketball, Orono stays unbeaten, beating Herman 53-43. Class B girls, Presque Isle 42-40 over Foxcroft Academy. Class B girls, Old Town defeats Caribou 64-40. And in Class C boys, Callis defeats PVHS 44-31. And finally, some girls hockey. Huge game Saturday with the unbeaten Penobscot Pioneers playing Gorham over at the Penobscot Ice Arena. Two of the better teams in the state going at it right here. First minute of the game, Pioneers Jordan Williams going to intercept this pass at the blue line. Gets in with it, snipes it, and converts. 1-0 Pios just like that. Under a minute later, Pioneers Anna Malloy sends one to the front, and the freshman Ella Davis is there to push it in. It's two to nothing just as fast. Pioneers trying to make it three to nothing here. Megan Delahanty is shot on net, but a nice save there by Emily Beal. To the second period now, it's the Rams' Marissa Payne touching it to Emerson Homa. Her shot saved by Anna DeRozier, but in comes Payne again to backhand it into the net. Gorham on the board. Rams score the next four goals after and win 6-2-3. Okay, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. I know, Mom. I wish I could come home, too. I wanna be home for the holidays Because home is only home when I'm with you I wanna be home for the holidays Home to you From a humble horse and buggy beginning over 100 years ago to a fleet of modern deluxe motor coaches today Sear North Star Tours wants to take you places. In Maine, throughout the United States, and abroad, we offer tours and day trips to suit everyone's interests and passions. Cherry blossoms in the spring, Prince Edward Island in the summer, trips to the city, trips to the shore, culture, history, music, and more. Sear North Star Tours, where can we take you? Your piece of land demands the very best equipment. Kubota Equipment the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience with professional grade mowers, versatile sidekick utility vehicles, and compact tractors that get it done right. All backed by unmatched dealer support. Talk to your dealer today to schedule a demo. Available at Doors Equipment, 1468 Outer Hammond Street, Bangor. With temperatures dropping and people flocking indoors, it can be difficult to avoid seasonal illnesses like COVID-19, the flu, and RSV. And with our social calendars filled up throughout the holidays, this time of year can also take a toll on your mental well-being. But there are several things you can do to help ensure that you and your loved ones stay healthy. Here's Fox's Gary Baumgarten with more. It may be the most wonderful time of the year, but it can also be one of the most stressful for your mental and physical health. We expect to see increases in things such as influenza and COVID, and we are seeing that according to the latest data. We've also seen quite a bit of RSV. And while it's a season for gifting, the last present you want to give or receive is an illness. We're more likely to share respiratory infections if we're coughing or sneezing just because we're so close to other people. Besides frequently washing your hands and wearing a mask when traveling on public transportation, some medical experts also recommend you get your annual flu and COVID-19 shots before going to a holiday party. You need to go through your insurance provider now for your COVID vaccine. So whereas before the federal government paid for everyone to get their COVID vaccine wherever they wanted to go. But with all the gatherings this season, it can be easy to spread yourself too thin. Ask yourself some important questions. Do I have the bandwidth to attend this event? How will I feel if I attend the event? How will I feel if I don't attend the event? And the answers to those questions can guide you in terms of determining where you want to allocate your time. All the hustle and bustle can also be tough on children. 
talking to your children about cognitive flexibility and the need sometimes to pivot to other things or to do things a little differently so that you can fit in as a family all of the events. Gary Baumgarten, Fox News. A survey by the Department of Housing and Urban Development finds that the number of people experiencing homelessness is up 12% since last year. The head count, which was taken in January, shows roughly 653,000 people were homeless. That's a more than a 70,000 increase from the year before that. The survey also found an increase in the number of people who were homeless for the first time. Biden administration officials say high rent prices and the end of pandemic assistance programs are contributing to the rise. All right, for a final check of the forecast, let's turn things back over to Devin Biggs. Alrighty, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Alrighty, this morning, lots of alerts in effect, though. This is pretty much everything in effect right now from the wind alerts to the flood alerts and even some issues over the ocean as well. Let's talk about the flood alerts here, though. We have coastal flood warnings that are posted until 5 p.m. along the coastline, though. Gusty winds out of the south going toward the north will make it interesting as we do move forward. There's also a flood watch over land because of heavy rainfall expected and storm warnings. The highest level though for the oceans because we will have gusty winds stirring up the ocean as well. So a lot of issues taking place and of course wind advisories and of course some high wind warnings also posted as well. This will last until about 1 a.m. later on Tuesday too. So lots of alerts in effect moving forward. So wave heights are not bad just yet at around at 7 to 9 feet. So this is enough to prompt some kind of advisory. But you notice the colors for the down to the south and that right there is going to be heading in our direction moving forward later on today. So be ready for that. Meanwhile, though, as we do to see things develop, we do have rain tracking from the south going toward the north. Not a lot of it just yet, though, but we are just getting started as more rain and gusty winds will be taking place. We'll pull this radar further down to the south here. You can see there's a lot of rainfall near the Boston area, and this is all going to be tracking off towards the north as we do move forward in time. The bigger picture looks like this. This is that system right here tracking from the south going toward the north and this will give us a lot of fanfare today but later on tonight and parts of tomorrow things will start to calm down so future cast moving forward plenty of heavy rainfall plenty of gusty winds these black lines here indicating isobars lines of equal pressure and the way they're stacked up like this indicating some gusty winds we'll be dealing with that today and the rainfall continues throughout the daytime period until about eight to nine o'clock later on tonight the rain will begin to end and the winds will slowly begin to back off as we head towards your tuesday and once we head towards tuesday though some clouds moving through maybe some sunshine too and perhaps a few rain showers possible in a few spots so it won't be widespread some of you may miss out on that but anything that does develop is out of here pretty quickly by tuesday evening and tuesday night and wednesday we're looking pretty good as the system finally begins to clear out of here as for the rainfall additional rainfall moving forward another one to two maybe up to three inches of rainfall before we're all finished up so be ready for flooding potential with all this rainfall on the way and the gusts of wind screaming up to 50 to even 60 miles per hour at times say so this will be a pretty strong system moving through then by later on tonight in the parts of your Tuesday. That's when things will finally begin to calm down. So as for today, here we go. Upper 50s, rain and wind. The heavy rain at times will be expected. And a southeast wind, not a typo, getting up to 60 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, lower 40s, rain and wind. Now, of course, this will be calming down late. But a south wind getting up to around 40 miles per hour at times. Tomorrow, a little bit better. Upper 40s, partly cloudy, a few rain showers. And a south wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation Extended Forecast, partly cloudy Wednesday and Thursday with highs in the middle to upper 30s. Then we'll be in the lower 30s Friday with a mostly sunny sky. We have lots of stuff for Christmas. When you're all done decorating, come back to Rennie's because we got plenty of gifts at the best prices for your whole family. Thank you for shopping locally. Rennie's, a main adventure. For 72 years, Rennie's has been your main staple, and we love supporting Maine made and local products. So thank you for shopping Rennie's, and thank you for shopping local this Christmas season. Thank you for shopping Rennie's. My father started a roofing company in the 1970s. Back when asbestos was still commonly used in Maine. When George was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew there wasn't a cure yet, but we knew he needed help. We call Jeb Bornstein's office because this family means business. Their team is handling everything, representing Mainers who were victims of asbestos exposure. 
We highly recommend the law offices of Joe Bornstein. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Did you know that it's possible to buy the wrong type of flooring for your home? Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional contractor, the experts at Don DeCal Mainwood Floors are here to help, offering solid pro advice from choosing the right material and color to installation. Don DeCal features the highest quality hardwood flooring sourced from lumber right here in Maine, from Maine Traditions. Not only will you get a floor you'll love, you'll get a floor that will last. Don DeCal Mainwood Floors, buy from the best, forget the rest. The Farmer's Table in Corinna brings you outstanding breakfasts, lunches, and dinners made from farm-grown fresh ingredients. Dinner specials are available every day. Enjoy our homemade desserts, and above all, bring your appetite to the Farmer's Table in Corinna. Hit it, Santa! This is the wow moment. The whole shebang. You are the champions of the great Christmas life party. A group of children in western Michigan built a beautiful doghouse to be raffled off and all the raised money for the city of they will raise money for the city of Taylor's animal shelter. Here's a look at the results of their hard work. The floor of that doghouse is insulated with R10 foam board and the seams are completely caulked to help seal the wood. It's all been painted with high quality exterior paint and finished with shingles and a roof for the water, food bowls and more. Material costs were nearly $200. They also had a hot cocoa stand to sell beverages to help raise even more money for the local shelter. What a neat thing. And Santa looks a little different this year for kids affected by the Lahaina fire in Maui. A toy drive is granting kids wishes and giving them free gifts before Christmas. Rolls and rolls of gift wrap and over thousands of toys wrapped and handed with aloha. A toy drive in Malaya is keeping the holiday spirit bright for families struggling months after the Lahaina fire. About 1,300 families signed up to receive their gifts, getting their pick from thousands of donations. For some, Kiki, it's a moment of peace and joy as their families continue to rebuild from the fires. According to the event organizers, over 2,000 toys were donated for the event, and any that haven't been received by families will be given back to the community as a distribution center in Lahaina. Very nice thing they're doing there. That's about all, we have, all the time we have for you at this hour. Um, again, be careful with the storm today. Don't drive on any water covered roads. Watch out for down power lines and we should be okay. We'll continue broadcasting on Fox 22. Good morning America next here on ABC 7. We hope you have a wonderful day.